Hello everyone, welcome to our studies on vps.com. Today I'm going to show you um, your first uh, uh, Elastics configuration after you have installed your Elastics, the thing, the steps that you need to go through to configure your Elastics. <clears throat> okay, now uh, the first thing that you are going to do is to allow uh, your, your employees access to your uh, uh, elastic server so uh, but you don't want them to uh, get into the server using uh, your uh, credentials as an administrator uh, you you want to to give them their own credentials and their own access uh, permissions so what you do is you go here where it says users okay now, when you get to the users, uh, you will find that uh, uh, there are uh, three groups already created here. You can create more groups if you want, uh, but there are three groups created uh, by default with uh, uh, different access uh, configurations. Uh, the administrator has access to everything else, to everything on the on the on, on the system, right? So operator you can choose this to to make it something else but may normally operators is for 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 call agents uh, let's say you are you are operating um, a call center so your agents are operators so um, you see so like i said e e e elastics comes with three different uh, groups <clears throat> with three with the different uh, permissions you can set the permissions uh, by go by clicking here group permissions and then you select uh, the group that you want uh, to apply the permissions to this one is the administrator group you can select the group here by going operator extension or any other group that you have created so you see that the administrator can access everything so you can actually for the other users that are not administrators you can select what they can see and what they can't see on your server all right so uh, let's go to users I've created a, 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 um, an employee a user who is an administrator, which means it's not just your, your, it's not you who is the main administrator, but <clears throat> this guy is going to run your server, is going to be uh, checking whatever the problems are. You want to give him total access to the to the server so that's that's the the one that we have created there so to create a user you just go here click create new user and then you put uh, the the login here like employee 2 or employee what whatever the name of that employee the password that is going to use and uh, the level of access here so if it is an administrator you put administrator if it's an operator you put an operator if it's an extension you put an extension All right so uh, <clears throat> what i want to to to, to say before um, I, I proceed here is that normally you don't want your extension users to have access to this panel but in case you are offering things like fax and emails and you want the, them to access their faxes and their emails to this um, uh, in this um, uh, user interface you can you can create uh, manually create uh, their accounts there uh, maybe you are offering email service and fax services as, as a, a, an add-on or uh, a value added uh, service and uh, so you, it means you are not going to give everyone access to it but only the pay your paying uh, uh, users or pay users who are, are allowed to use those services okay <clears throat> all right so 
that's uh, that's where the the initial thing and if you want to to make backups uh, of of your systems you can you of everything that you have or some things that you have on your on your server you can just go here to create uh, backups and perform you can actually backup or, or to an ftp uh, which means an uh, an outside uh, offsite uh, uh, server, or you can create backups on site, or you can do both. Okay, so this is where you create your backups. Okay, and uh, okay, now uh, let's go to. Uh, we want this thing to be operational, so we want uh, to 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 create extensions where which we can give to users so that users can um can be able to do their calls via uh, our system but before we do that we need to create a trunk a trunk that will connect uh, uh, the the a2 billing uh, okay no uh, uh, let me just explain the extensions first before I can go to the trunks. Okay, All right. So uh, we create the extension here. Click submit. So extensions can call. Uh, uh, each other they, they are internal uh, <coughs> devices so uh, extension one extension can call another extension and it's it's, it's like uh, let me give you a scenario where you are having a skype the other the the guy using skype and the other the guy using skype when they call each other or they communicate with each other they are these are basically extensions in the server which are communicating so there's no need to build uh, uh, this extension um, uh, uh, calls you see uh, if, you, if if you want to, to build extensions uh, extension calls you don't need to create your extensions in free pbx you create your extensions in a2 billing right but there are some advantages to creating your extensions in in, in free pbx okay so now we have created our extension there. Uh, the name of that guy is Jane Doe. Right? Here, CID alias, if you want to send a, a caller ID which is different from that 4000, you can put another, any other caller ID that you want to send to your internal uh, SIP. Uh, let's say you are calling another SIP. Um, uh, you can also use that here sip alias you can use a name instead of of of, of your um, extension so if you don't want this 4000 or this one to appear you want a friendly name you can you can even put your name here john uh, jane and uh, door as your as your sip alias okay your outbound cid this is the caller id that you want to appear when you call outside the um pbx you see when you call outside the pbx you want you want a, a, a cid that shows uh, you can use 4000 if you want it to show as 4000 or you can maybe use your mobile device here the the customer's mobile device here you can even you put it here and or or you can put the uh, customer's a2 uh, billing account uh, something like that okay so um, here we go right i'm going to leave it as 4000 <clears throat> okay here where it says um, emergency CID di dialing this is the number that you want to send if you are you, uh, let's say you are dialing 9911 you want to send a caller id that identify 
uh, the uh, name of, 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 of the name and location of, of the person calling so you'd rather here put uh, your your number your your physical uh, phone number um, from your your, your your local telecom that is at your home number okay so that when you call uh, 911 this number whatever this number is it 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 will be transmitted uh, to the 9 e911 service and they will be able to retrieve your information uh, immediately <clears throat> okay so now i'm going to leave it like this okay if you have got if you have assigned a did to that guy to that extension you can put a, your did there um, you can put the description there and the did number and the did caller id here you put a secret secret is the password so your password must at least have uh, two um, letters at minimum it must have two letters and two numbers so i'm going to use demo one two three as my password right okay here if you want to enable dictation services like you want somebody to be able to to speak and the when they are speaking and you are you are recording uh, and that that um, message is transmitted through an email address to to an email address this is what you do you enable here and then you choose the file format that you want here either or for this gsm or web so let's put web which is common and then we put our uh, jane door email here jane door at domain dot com okay right and uh, okay next uh, language code you can leave this empty it's fine okay recording incoming do you want to record uh, incoming calls to this uh, call call uh, to this extension suppose it's a it's a customer relation extension and you want to record all calls for credit purposes uh, you can you can actually record all incoming or uh, all outgoing calls whatever calls you can record if you want uh, you just put always record or never record if you don't want to record at all or on demand if you want them to use if you want people to use feature codes to to be able to record okay then here we go to voicemail you can enable voicemail or you can leave it disabled the way you want to this particular extension so you you, you can you can it is possible to enable voicemail to some extensions and disable voicemail to some extensions so it depends on you okay so let's say our this is our email we we'll password you can put a password there which is numbers in in numbers uh, you can put put a password a pin there or you can leave it open to just access the password without a pin so now i'm going to put this email address is where the voicemail message is going to be sent and pager email address pager email address if you check like this it's a pager or mobile email address that uh, short voicemail notifications are sent so l suppose you you've got an, an, an a mobile e email address or an, an, an email address that is attached to your mobile of which if somebody sends an, an, an email address an, an email message to that um, address it arrives as a, a an sms on your phone so you it's it's normally in the form of let's say seven two five nine eight three five eight then you put the domain of of, of the of the um, operator you need to check with your operator what your your email address is your, for your mobile uh, number or in some uh, cases you need to register with them to have that kind of email so let's say this guy is from is using verizon and and the email address for it's verizon.com 
okay at verizon.com right so that's when uh, there is a voicemail uh, on on the sip uh, account this guy doesn't know that there is a voicemail because the call does not come to his mobile maybe he's out of the office or he's in an area where there's no internet uh, he cannot access his sip phone so uh, a short message is sent to his mobile's uh, number so that he can be able to, to he, he he knows that there is a voicemail that has arrived in my uh, sip account okay so this is why this pager is when this pager goes it doesn't go with the attachment it goes on its own so if you don't want this pager remove it and but if you want it leave it like that we are going to leave it like that okay right so now you are going to have uh, uh, options here <clears throat> do you want an email uh, attachment of the vo of your voicemail if you if you want an email attachment of the voice you put yes if you don't want an email to be sent with the that attachment of a wave you go to you press no so i'm going to say yes do you want it to play the cid cid is uh, it can say you have a voicemail from uh, uh, and then it plays the number from where the voicemail is coming from so if you want that number played you put yes okay here it says play envelope envelope con controls whether or not the voicemail system will play the message envelope which m the envelope includes uh, the date and the time uh, uh, of of the message so it will say you have a voice a voicemail message that was sent uh, uh, on today at so so much time or that was sent a thursday or whatever the time that it that it can play so if you if you want that time to be played then you put yes because that that is the envelope if you don't want it to play that message to say to give you the time and date you put no okay once your voicemail has been uh, 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 sent right do you want it deleted once your voicemail has been sent to your email attachment do you want it deleted if you if you leave this at yes it means you won't be able to access this voicemail via your sip phone you will only be able to receive the voicemail right if you leave it at no you'll be able to receive the voicemail and you also be able to retrieve the voicemail right but it will not delete the voicemail okay so it it is up to you to choose whatever you want to to use we are going to leave all these other items as as um default then we submit So now we have created a, a, an extension. We can do the same thing again to create another extension and another and another and another. So it's fine, right? When, but when you create a, an extension, if you if you click on on that extension, You will find that there are some uh, additional fields that have been included now. Now uh, there are some additional fields that are there. And the most important additional field that we are going to look at is the account code. We, I'm going to come back here on the account code to show you how you can link an extension to an account in the A2 billing uh, system, right? So later I'll show you how to do that, okay? So now, 
uh, at least now we have after creating uh, after doing anything in in your free pbx side just confirm okay so now we have uh, learned how to 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 put in a, a new customer uh, an extension number you see so and and if, if, if actually also on that extension uh, thing if you see this this these are the uh, when you when you want to set up your sip account let's say you are using uh, let's say zoipa Okay. You want to set up your SIP account on Voiper so that you can on, on a soft phone so that you can be able to 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 use it. Let me just uh, set it up here. I'm going to I'm using the trial version of the the free version of 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 Zoeper. So the maximum number of 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 of, of accounts here is 2. So I'm going to delete this one. All right, and then create a new one here. It's a SIP one, so I'm going to to call it testing. Testing. Okay. So we can go back here. <clears throat> the domain we are, we can use the IP address. Copy this domain so um, go here paste it that's the domain the username is 4000 the password is demo one two three the cid is four zero zero four thousand so we click register here it must go you must check here it will be saying registering and then when it's registered it says registered so okay it means this phone this uh, soft phone now is um can now uh, communicate with our server you see if i if i make a call here uh, suppose i make a call uh, okay You see now I, I found <coughs> extension 4000 which is my extension so but I'm on the phone so that's that's why it told me the person on that extension is on the phone if I if I create another extension here let me create another extension and phone that extension again you'll find that uh, uh, um, if I put the voicemail uh, If I put the voicemail uh, option, uh, then it 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 when I when I phone that extension, then it will put that thing. Uh, it will it will send the my call to the voicemail. So let me just do it that very fast. I'm not going to explain here now. I'm just going to to do it fast since I've already explained uh, how what each field is for Demo one, two, three again. Submit. I 
Okay, I forgot to to enable my voicemail here. So let me go back and enable the voicemail. So if you are offering a free phone service, you don't even need A2 billing. You just end here and you, you give your people free uh, free extensions and then okay i want to enable my voice here my and mickey at domain dot com all right yes 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 and no okay Submit. Every time you do something on Elastics or on the free PBX side, you need to apply. <coughs> we 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 don't. Uh, Elastics is is combining everything. Free PBX and 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 a2 billing but it's 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 in a like in in a box like you see this it's embedded our this this these fields are from free pbx but they are embedded here so if you want to access the unembedded free pbx you go there and you you go there first of all you need to remove the settings that prevent you from going there it will tell you exactly which settings so but i encourage you to leave the unembedded pbx don't touch it otherwise you might break your things in in, in elastics or you can create a a, a a security vulnerability by making your your free pbx available to anyone else okay now what what i'm going to do now is i'm going to phone <coughs> Uh, four zero zero one but four zero zero one is you see so th this is how it is I'm going to leave a message and this message will play and uh, and um, when when the guy gets the message okay this message will also be sent good so that's that's how it is so it's, it's it, the the guy on 4001 is not connected to any SIP phone so that's why it went to voicemail so uh, so if you connect it to to a SIP phone the way we have connected with our zoipa here uh, everything else uh, goes the call will be answered and people will start talking so that's it on 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 initial setup creating your customers and in the next uh, um, uh, video i'm going to show you how to link uh, to, to 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 create trunks to how to create trunks to make outbound calls and uh, we are still in, in in free pbx then i'll also show you how to 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 uh, uh, link uh, elastic uh, free pbx and a2 billing so that we can send our calls to a2 billing for rating before uh, it's 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 uh, the 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 call can go through okay so uh, uh, thank you for watching this um, video and let's meet in the next video